basically, it became <coughs> more of a hassle for us to be able to do operations up there. It became harder for our volunteers to get get onto the operational side. So we moved the aircraft restoration down here to the museum, which benefits us in two ways. Is one that the general public can see the restoration in process, and B, if people want to get involved, it makes it a lot easier. Now, the aircraft beside me is another tracker. This tracker is very special Canadian history. This is actually the very first tracker in Canada. This tracker was built by Grumman down in the States and was sent up to Canada, up to De Havilland, as a, as a model and jig for De Havilland to build the Canadian tracker. And all the experimentations and any modifications of the tractor were done to this aircraft first and then subsequently moved on to other tractors. And this aircraft actually just came in for restoration. We, just, we finished the T-Bird on the other side and we just moved this aircraft in last week. It's been sitting outside off and on for the last 25 years. And it's kind of interesting, this aircraft is the very first tractor Canada owned. The one back out on the floor it's the very last operational tractor flown in Canada as part of the Canadian military. It was flown from Summerside to here, at which point the ceremonial handing over of the keys was done, and they basically, the Canadian Force handed it over to the museum, at which point we took possession of it. And that aircraft as well is also fully, op fully operational. It can still fly. Now, the second pride and joy of our museum is going to be this aircraft here. This is Ferry Firefly. And I said this area tends to stand several generation gaps. Well, this aircraft is a Mark I Firefly. It flew operationally off HMCS Warrior. This was Canada's first anti-submarine warfare aircraft of the Cold War. This aircraft Gave birth, basically gave birth to the Avenger, which then gave birth to the Tracker. So we have three generations of anti-submarine warfare aircraft. These aircraft were used at the end of the 1940s into the very early 50s, at which point when they retired, they were sold off to the Ethiopian Air Force. The Ethiopian Air Force bought 10 of them with no spare parts, just the aircraft as is where it is, and they flew them operationally, one by one, taking an aircraft, cannibalizing it to keep the other ones fully airworthy, until basically they could no longer fly operationally. They were then put into desert storage over in Ethiopia, and personnel, a fellow on a, actually on a exchange posting, spotted these aircraft sitting in the basement in the middle of a minefield in Ethiopia. Going up to the aircraft and examining them, he noticed very faintly Royal Canadian Navy still stanceled on the side. The Ethiopian Air Force never bothered to really repaint them. And knowing what they were, quickly helped to basically have negotiations between the American or between the Canadian government and the Ethiopian, or Ethiopian government to acquire several of these aircraft. We actually acquired three of them. Two. Two aircraft actually came back to Canada as whole, this aircraft, and one aircraft that went to the National Aviation Museum in Ottawa. A third aircraft was cannibalized for parts, and parts were brought over. That was in 1993. That's when we started the restoration process on this aircraft. It's still ongoing restoration process, and we're hoping before, before winter comes and the not the first snow, but the actual full snowfall flies. We're actually hoping to run this aircraft up, have the engine run up. And by next summer, for the air show next fall, in September, we're actually planning on flying this aircraft. The gentleman who came over to fly our swordfish aircraft is coming back to fly this aircraft for us. So this aircraft has been a labor of love for our volunteers, oftentimes having only one person working, at, working on it. And it's been a fairly, fairly, fairly large endeavor for the museum. The most expensive part of the restoration process is the propeller. 
These propeller blades are actually made of wood and had to be sent over to Germany for, to a company over in Germany because they were the last company in the world that could do the special lamination work to restore them. And as of, as, as of today, it, they still remain the most expensive part of the restoration. We've had many, many supporters. Uh, Imperial Oil has donated to us most of the fuel and lubricant for the aircraft. And when the aircraft is actually ready to fly, they're actually going to provide the fuel for it. As I said, hopefully by next summer, we are going to actually fly this aircraft again, operationally again. So it's a very good example of what happens when a dedicated group of individuals can actually or preserve our heritage. And unfortunately, we also have examples in here of what happens when the ideas of preserving our heritage are not done officially, i.e. the Avenger and the 40 years that it sat outside. 